rip through this. Okay. Yes. I have the AMC A-List membership, and for those of you who don't know, that's a monthly subscription service wherein for nineteen ninety five a month, I get three free movie tickets a week. And before the pandemic, I managed to see 178 movies in a 66-week period of time, and that is fucking insane. Then the pandemic screwed all of that up, but now I'm back and I'm watching two movies a week, because baby steps. So let's talk about some new movies because it's time once again for Steve Stubbs of the Week. Okay. So this is my sixth week back, and now I have seen 12 movies in theaters this time around. Also, I did the math here. I did the math because I, I was wondering if I was getting a bang for my buck. So I... Each movie ticket is eight dollars and seventy nine cents. It's it's only five dollars on Tuesdays, but on Tuesdays everyone and their grandmother is at the theater, so I don't go on Tuesdays. I go on Mondays and Thursdays, and those tickets are eight dollars and seventy nine cents right now. So every month, I would spend seventy dollars and thirty two cents on movies. But instead, I'm spending nineteen ninety five a month. I think that's a pretty good goddamn deal. Hey, A list sponsorship. Plus, I'm barely plus I'm barely spending any money at the snack bar. Yeah. Sometimes I buy a little bit of popcorn, but that's it. So I think I'm doing pretty darn good here. So this past week, I saw the following two movies in theaters: the new A twenty four film, The Green Knight. And the Disney action film, Jungle Cruise. Now, first off, let's discuss the movie that I have not chosen as my movie pick of the week. The Disney action film, Jungle Cruise. It's pretty good. It's all right. It's exactly what you think it is. It's fine. The Rock is good in it. His uh, his co-star, the new Mary Poppins, she's great in it. Plus, one major character is fucking gay. Yeah. So, and, and the one thing that I loved about it was that there were a ton of little geeky Disney ride references in it. Yeah. And I really appreciated that. Like, there's a bad guy who appears, like, in, near the beginning of the film. And I wasn't expecting this, but it's fucking uh, Paul Giamatti. Yes. This, like, I, didn't, I didn't know fucking Paul Giamatti was in this film. And he has a bird on his shoulder, a parrot that talks, and her name is Rosita. And she's mentioned in the fucking Tiki Room. <laughs> I may have squealed. I may have squealed. When I saw a Tiki Room reference, I think I went, mm, I fucking know that. That's the fucking Tiki Room. And I got excited about that. And then um, uh, there were some more. There, there was a tribe of, of uh, natives. And one of them is just like, uh, like, hey, maybe you can help me and I can help you. Hey, Trader Sam, you know, Trader Sam loves to bargain. Come on over and Trader Sam will help you. Trader Sam is a really awesome tiki bar at Disney World. Yeah. And when you order specific drinks, then different things happen throughout the bar. There will be lightning or thunder or a god will appear and start talking to you or it'll start raining. Like, it's a weird-ass bar that I always wanted to go to. So Trader Sam's was in it. Also, these next two were kind of a stretch, but there are Nazis and they're in a submarine. And they do have submarine sound effects that are the exact sound effects from the old-timey submarine ride at Disneyland. Yeah. And then at the end, one character is like, oh, throughout the entire film, like, uh, like Agent Mobius from Loki, I always wanted to ride in an automobile. Where at the end of the movie, the character finally gets to ride in an automobile, and he's driving the automobile, and he doesn't know how to drive the automobile, and he's driving all over the place. You could say it's a wild ride. It's basically Mr. Toad. This movie is the Avengers Endgame of D-list Disney rides. 
there's probably a bunch more that I didn't even notice, you know, because I'm not that super into Disney. But I really liked it, and uh, I, I understand why they made the movie. Because Johnny Depp is toxic, and they can't do any more pirate movies. Yes. They can reboot them with a different person, but it's not going to be the same. They need a different Pirates of the Caribbean movie, so they got The Rock, they got The Jungle Cruise. Okay, here you go. And this so I, a- I, I can kick in here, because I have seen this. You know? Oh yeah. And and like I I liked it. It's a completely serviceable movie. You know? Yeah, it it was fine. It was pretty good. But there were some funny it parts. Uh dipped more toward the Pirates of the Caribbean yeah, movies absolutely. than the Jumanji movies. And I wasn't such yeah. a big fan of that. I, I understand. This is supposed to be the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie because Johnny Depp is toxic now. Johnny Depp is going fucking insane and, I don't know, hitting Amber Heard with scarves. I don't know. Because Johnny Depp is 80% scarf. So they needed a different Pirates movie and they just got a different Disney ride and turned it into a Pirates film. And I'm all right with that. I would rather see Jungle Cruise 2 than have to watch Pirates of the Caribbean 2. And I I think that's a good way to look at it. I would wa- rather watch more of The Rock and Mary Poppins than watch more of Johnny Depp. And I think that that means that The Jungle Cruise is a pretty good movie. But I still find myself every now and then, like, I have to stop and I'm like, wait, that's the fucking rock in this movie. You know? I, I It's and, one of those things and, and like, I, I felt... feel like I will never get over, like I will never get over walking into a marijuana dispensary and being like, I... Yeah. There should be somebody in here beating their child. I mean, that's the marijuana buying experience of my youth. <laughs> you know? Somebody when should be a, sitting up one in of here. The... <laughs> you know? I see and it's the rock. not. And I I'm like, the... I am walking into a well-lit, clean place and making a purchase... Yeah. Of marijuana in the same way I would make a purchase of a Snickers bar. Yeah. And it's something that, it that I will never get over, and I will never get over The Rock being a goddamn good actor. I I I never see him as a wrestler anymore, but I did at one part of this movie because uh, Emily Blunt is just sitting there and it's nighttime and The Rock sits down in front of her and he has a guitar. Yeah. And it's like, shit, I remember the last time that Rock was a full-time wrestler and he was a bad guy and so he would do what he called rock concerts yeah. where he would sit in the ring with a guitar and sing songs making fun of the audience. And so it's like, oh, this is a wrestling thing. I don't think people are realizing that this is a wrestling thing because The Rock is an action movie star now and not a wrestler. But this is a wrestling reference. Just like in Mo- Moana, right before uh, The Rock's character sings his song, his popular song, You're Welcome, one eyebrow raises. Yeah. And it's like, shit, people don't know this anymore because he's just an actor. That's a wrestling reference. One part of the movie that I really liked is when the jaguar or cheetah or tiger or whatever the fuck goes into the bar and everyone's like, oh, no, this this animal's going to kill us. And The Rock starts fighting him. And at one point in time, The Rock suplexes the tiger. And I'm like, wait. They're not fighting. They're professional wrestling each other. This is fake. So I called the fact that The Rock and the the wild animal were best friends because they did have The Rock just wrestle in the the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit, he was doing wrestling moves because that was fake. This was all pre-planned. I thought that that was neat. I feel that there are parts of this film where they do make references to the fact that, yeah, this star is a fucking wrestler. And I kind of like that. It's like the fight scene in They Live. 
Well, I, I mean more like, like, uh, but I, I feel very proud of The Rock, you know? Like, I feel, I, I like, like, God damn it, you made it. And, like, for as many wrestlers who have tried to be actors, which I think is about equal to the amount of rock stars who have tried to be actors. Ugh. Yeah. I'm glad to see that he made it. You know? Yeah. And yeah. you kind of knew he one. would because he took it more seriously than any other actor and coming out straight yeah. up in Be Cool and being like, I am busting the living shit out of my stereotype with this movie and this part. Yeah. The Rock and uh, the guy from Outcast were the two only good films, the, the two only good parts in Be Cool. The entire film was shit, but The Rock as the bodyguard who wants to be, who's gay and wants to be a country music singer. And then the guy from Outcast, from the rap group Outcast is the one who keeps fucking up in the, the group of bad guys. And at the end, he's like, don't give me no gun. Don't give me no gun. You know how this is going to turn out. Like, those were the only good parts of a really bad movie. I, I know how you feel about The Rock because I remember being really nervous watching Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm like... Fucking Batista. I never really liked you as a wrestler, yeah. but now you have a chance to star in a Marvel movie. Please don't fuck this up. Yeah. Please do not fuck this up. And he and and now he's gonna be in Dune. He's yeah. gonna be Dune. Like fucking okay, Batista, fuck. I, I and I want I, I must say, I really want Dune to suck. Yes, and it I, looks I like wanted to. I, I, yeah, I, it's. I want to see this movie crash and burn. Yeah, it look. It doesn't look the best. It doesn't look the best. With all the build but. up. And now I had heard, and like this really turned me off. I heard Jason Brolin was going to play Duncan Idaho, and I was like, "Oh man, that is." Way, way off the mark. But now I'm hearing yeah. it's Jason Momoa, and that makes a bit more yes. sense. I saw a big, long preview for that during during the week. And I don't know, the, the new trailer that I just saw for the new Dune movie makes it look like they're trying to turn Dune into just a typical action blockbuster, which is not what fucking Dune is. Yeah. So I'm a bit worried about that. But anyway, yeah, Dune. Fucking, I, I liked the Jungle Cruise. I thought it was cute. I liked it. It was all right. I didn't like the whole, oh, the ending. Of course, it's a typical generic CGI fest. I don't like that. I, I, I didn't you hate know? it. You know, I didn't hate yeah. it. It's a serviceable movie. If it's somebody all right. popped it on, it's I right. wouldn't have a complaint. You know, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just not, you know. Yeah. I'm not in I love understand. With it. I understand. I love yeah. the Rock's corny ass jokes. Yes, I was so happy that they kept the stupid jokes from the Jungle Cruise ride. Yeah, in and the I movie, thought the they were from the, I thought they might have been from the ride because he was doing a whole tour yeah. guide thing. I don't like the Jungle Cruise light, but I like the concept of it because basically uh, they go, here is an entire book of jokes that you can do at various parts of the ride, and you can do whichever jokes you want. Yeah. And I like the idea of that. But I don't like the ride. I just, I don't like the ride. So that's why I went into this movie with zero expectations. So that's why I think I liked it. Yeah. Because I wasn't like, this part has to be in it, and this part has to be in it. No, it's the fucking Jungle Cruise. Who cares? So I have an idea for the next Disney movie. So this is, this is, my, this is my trailer. In a world where everyone walks very, 
very slowly. One brave scientist had an idea for a mode of transportation that would move slightly faster. The rock stars in People Mover, the ride. Yeah. That's my next Disney film. Boom. Call me Disney. Call me maybe. And finally, my Steve Stubbs pick of the week is The Green Knight. Holy fucking shit. I love this goddamn movie. Really? Oh, my God. It reminded me of The Lighthouse in that I went to the movie. I think I saw a preview maybe once. But I'm like, I need to watch a movie. I guess I'll watch The Lighthouse. And I'm sitting there going, huh, I, I wonder what this movie is going to be about. And then I watched the movie for 15 minutes, and I'm like, I still don't know what this movie's about. And then I'm halfway into really? the film, and I'm like, I'm still confused. And then the movie ends, and I'm like, what the fuck was that? And when can I see it again? Because I'm kind of in love with this bizarre-ass adventure I went on. And that was 100%. Uh, The Green Knight, I was profoundly moved by it. It was bizarre and beautiful. And I, I hate to say this, because it makes me sound like such a pretentious fucking prick. But it... It, it reminded me of Joe Dorowski's Holy Mountain in the sense that you could pause this, get a screenshot of a random scene, and yeah. it would look so beautiful that you could put it in a fucking museum. Yeah. There are parts of this film that just look and sound and feel like the most high fucking work of art imaginable. And it was a real adventure for me because I don't know Arthurian legend, no offense, but that always seemed like a white people thing that I never had to learn, you know? I never had to know about any of that shit, so I don't know much of Arthurian legend. Most of what I've learned about Arthurian legend came from Sean Connery and that one, and the Disney's The Sword in the Stone. Yeah. (laughs) And that's fucking it. So uh, I don't know a lot about Arthurian legend. So I I did not know what this movie was about. I knew that there was an an old-timey poem called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, but that's all I knew. I didn't know what the poem was, what it was about, so this whole movie was a fucking roller coaster for me. The first thing that shocked me is that uh, Sir Gawain, apparently it's pronounced Gawain, and that blew my fucking mind. You mean I've been pronouncing this wrong for 40-odd yeah. years? Yeah. Apparently it's Sir Gowan in the Green Knight. Oh, fucking K. Is, is, is he Klingon? I don't fucking know. I do not know. But, oh, my God, what a beautiful movie, and I absolutely loved it. And I literally heard a couple walk out of the theater during the credits and say, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and that is and that is such a rare thing to hear because for most of the movies that exist if you've seen a preview you know everything that is going to happen in 80% of the fucking movie yeah if you saw a preview for old you know what old is about you know what's going to happen you have a good sense of who's going to die And it won't be a big fucking shock to you. So I saw the previews for The Green Knight and still saw the film and was still completely blown away. And also it it strayed greatly. Like once I left the theater, I went out and read the original poem because that's how much I was profoundly moved by this work of fine art that I tracked down the poem and I read it and I, and the movie strayed greatly from 
parts of the poem. So even if you know and have studied Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, this movie will still fucking surprise you. Yes. It's an incredible film, and I absolutely loved it, and everyone should see it, and it's the best. I yes. fucking love it. It's right up there with The Lighthouse and Midsommar. Maybe not as much as Midsommar, because that is still the alpha and omega of the movies for me. Yes. But it's in the ballpark, you know? Cannot recommend it enough. Incredible movie, and I absolutely love it. So cool. that's it for that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. Next week we will be discussing uh, the Suicide Squad and fucking something else. I don't know, but we'll figure it out next week. So join us next week for up to the date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the week. And cut on that. <laughs>